Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. This is episode 53, our WrestleMania weekend hangover episode. Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. And here's your host, Conrad Cushman. You're listening to Brain Buster Radio. Welcome, welcome. This is Marty the Moth Casals from Lucha Underground and more. And you're watching Conrad Cushman and everything pro wrestling. It's going to be fun. <laughs> welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans. For the fans. And I am your host, Conrad Cushman. And with me today, you got your boy Robert Anderson once again, the Sultan of Sweet Saudi Money. So, with that being <laughs> said, let us get ready to talk about some news within WWE. And we also have to talk about this superstar shakeup. Uh, not only that, me and Robert have discussed 10 moves that we think need to happen. So, we're going to go through the news take a little bit of a break, and then we're going to talk about the top 10 moves that need to happen with this superstar shakeup, give some opinions and stuff, and we'll have some back and forth verbal discussion about it. Now, speaking of sweet Saudi money, Rob, tell the people how they can support everything pro wrestling with your awesome t-shirt designs. Oh, as you all know, we got merch now. We're on uh, tpublic.com slash user slash EPW. Uh, we got t-shirts, we got onesies, we got pillows, phone cases, mugs. Whatever you want. You can put any color that you want. Customize it any way you want. Helps us out immensely. It's all a labor of love. And you actually get something for spending your money on everything pro wrestling. I'm not asking you for free money. If you want to do it, that's great. But I would rather have you get something out of it than get nothing. Yeah, we don't ask for hands or handouts around here. Damn right. Um, also, we got some designs in the lab currently being worked on. I think they're pretty dope. So expect that coming yeah. out soon. We out here working, people. With that being said, let us get to our first news story of the day. Brett the Hitman Hart releases a statement after being attacked at the Hall of Fame. Rob, tell the people what happened before we read Bret Hart's <laughs> quote here. So it was Bret Hart's turn to speak. He's in. They had this new setup where they don't have a stage. They have a ring in the middle of the arena. where um, basically letting the legends get in the ring one last time. I like it. It actually looked pretty cool, but we probably won't see it again. So Bret Hart's up there with Natalia, giving his whole his whole speech about the Hart Foundation. All of a sudden, some maniac comes in the ring. I don't know how he got past security. I don't know if they just weren't paying attention. Wearing his little stupid uh, dreadlock hat. He tackles Bret Hart into Natalia, and apparently he got a punch in, too. This is the dumbest thing this guy could have ever done. <laughs> First off, he got mobbed. Wait a minute. Before I even get into this, number one, I didn't watch the Hall of Fame. So maybe if I'm speaking out of turn, tell me. But I didn't watch it yet. I'm going to. This guy gets on the stage. This asshole, I'm going to say it, gets out of the crowd and goes up there and does it. Now, I've heard he was an MMA fighter. We're not going to speak his name on the show because he doesn't deserve any publicity. But he went up there and attacked someone who was a cancer survivor and he had a stroke. You've got to be a real piece of work to do something like that, in my opinion. <laughs> but anyway, Brett the Hitman Hart released a statement, and he said, and I quote, If there's one thing I want everyone to take away from the Hall of Fame ceremony is not so much what happened, but how I wasn't going to let anything stop me from completing my tribute to my best friend and our team. Couldn't have said it better, Brett. Well, that's the excellent e excellence of this execution. <laughs> yeah. The I, it's different for me, obviously. Can't yeah. get my words out, boy. <laughs> the Brett the Hitman Hart is uh, a legend in the business, and he didn't deserve to be treated like that. But you know what? I'm glad that Brett got to go up there, finish his tribute. He deserved it. What do you think about fans attending the Hall of Fame, though, Rob, in the future? Um, I think I always said that the Hall of Fame should be like a more intimate ceremony. Remember how you used to back, back in like the early 90s where they were like it was just the wrestlers in the crowd and it was like two or three inductees? At the most. Maybe that should just be something that's for the wrestlers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you get to relax. You're not signing autographs. We want you to be here so that you can have your moment and it's kind of peaceful. Or you give it to a limited amount of fans, but they're kind of elevated so that they're not there in the front and center. I or, don't know. I or, feel like the fans kind of, like, force these shows to drag along more. 
I mean, we have four hour Hall of Fame shows. Never needs to happen. Yeah, I didn't. Was the was this one long? I haven't looked at the. Uh, just under four hours. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This is the WrestleMania hangover, like we said, though. So, <laughs> like I said, this guy got the crap kicked out of him by everybody that was in the front row or around there. Just rushed the ring. Dash Wilder got his shot in. He's the new hitman. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, shout out to uh, Dash Wilder, um, Ronda Rousey's husband too was oh, in Travis there. Brown. <laughs> yeah, and D. H. Smith. Now, one thing I laughed at, I shouldn't be laughing. This is a messed up situation, but if you watch the actual uh, ceremony before and after, they cut it. They did a great job editing this to where you would never know like that happened. But if you look, you can see Bret Hart's hair all messed up. Everybody that was in the front row that got involved in the frazzle, their suits are all messed up. Everybody just got these scowls on their face. Freaking terrible. <laughs> Just like, what happened? Yeah, they should not have things like that happening on that show. Speaking of things not happening on the show, as you guys can see from the title, this is the WrestleMania weekend hangover. We're talking about everything that happened. So after WrestleMania, we always have the Raw after Mania. Now, the viewership is down significantly from last year's post-Raw show. But I believe it's up from the previous week, which I would expect it to be. I mean, nothing could be bad as those go-home shows were for uh, WrestleMania <laughs> 35. So right now, for the Monday Night Raw, Brooklyn, New York, Barclay Center edition, we had a 2.924 million viewers, up from last week's 2.639. Yeah, I mean, do you think WWE did a wise thing? They were going up against the NCAA Men's College Championship basketball game on CBS. I think that's why they teased the winner-take-all match with Kofi and Seth, and then they kind of said, ha-ha, gotcha, bait-and-switch. Well, I'll tell you this much. Given the teams that were involved in the uh, NCAA championship, no disrespect to them, I really wasn't interested. So I would rather watch three hours of Raw. That's saying something. Speaking of college basketball, I have to give a shout-out to my good friends at Everything College Basketball. Everything College Basketball has been producing great content. They did cover the championship game. And as a basketball lover such as myself, I always tune into their stuff. They have a great podcast that they put up every single week on Anchor. So make sure you check them out by typing in Everything College Basketball. Shout out to those guys. And I know they're going to have a bunch of stuff for the offseason. So make sure you check them out. With that being said, let's see how the blue brand did on the SmackDown side, Rob. Um, it looks like they suffered the exact same fate, though, that Monday Night Raw did. Up from the previous week, but compared to last year's post-WrestleMania show, down. Um, let's see what we got for they, numbers. They were down significantly, actually. <laughs> yes. they. Let's see. They averaged 2.199 million viewers. So the previous week, they had 2.141, but... It does not compare to last year's. Was it 2.952? Yes. It's like, yeah. I they they got it rough, man. I don't know if there were more things on TV Tuesday. I just think that these shows, here's my rule of thumb. If WrestleMania is good, the post-Raw show is not going to be as good. If WrestleMania is like, eh, the post-Raw is going to be better. What's your favorite? Post uh, WrestleMania Raw show. I mean, SmackDown to me has never been a really a big deal for the post WrestleMania show. Oh, uh, I would say probably after WrestleMania 29, where uh, Dolph, Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler cashed in when he actually mattered. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, <laughs> you were I, at that show, right? I, I didn't go to that show. I was actually coming oh, home you're, you're on right. the train. So here's the cool thing: I went to WrestleMania 29, broke as a joke, spent my money on it though because I was like, ah, I really got to go see this. So. It's me, my brother, uh, Donnie, and my wife. Now, she was my girlfriend at the time. And we're all there watching. And we went to WrestleMania. We're like, ah, that was it. And I'm like, knowing being there, I was like, it was cool being there. But at the same time, I know this show sucked at home. Like, everybody who watched it was like, this show sucked. Hey, take your like was good. Right, one match. But the rest of it, the tag match with Kane and Dolph Ziggler, Big E, and Daniel Bryan, Team Hell No versus those guys, eh. You just had a bunch of weird stuff. Mark Henry falling on Ryback. That was uh, bad. This is before the network, too, man. I paid 65 bucks for this show at home. Peace. But <laughs> they did all that stuff, right? And you knew, like, okay, we're coming home the next day on the train. And while we're coming home, someone pops open their laptop. They have a stream of Monday Night Raw. Don't know if it was illegal or illegal. 
but that's neither here nor there. So we're all watching on the train. Dolph Ziggler coming out to cash in. It was so weird to be on a train with people I didn't know. We're all jumping up and down for Dolph Ziggler because he became the world heavyweight champion. We thought it was such a cool moment, and that was a really good episode. There have been other episodes. I thought WrestleMania 31 was really good. The post show? Yeah. It wasn't that great. I was in uh, Georgia when that happened. Crazy. But we we won't dwell on this too much longer. But it's a post show. Sometimes you can't expect everything afterwards. I think a lot of people have unfair expectations when it comes nah. to that. Before we move on, um, do you think the ratings, the ratings even matter anymore? Because they're making more money than they ever have. Right now, and they're always going, oh, the, rater- the ratings aren't that important now. I think they matter. I just don't think that you can put as much of a, yes, we need to focus on this segment, that, that, this means so much. Because, so what about from a fan's pers- perspective? Um, No, you shouldn't care. I mean, what do you care about financials and everything else? I mean, I guess you could use it to argue a point. They should push this guy because he drew the most ratings. But if it's not consistent, who cares? You know what I mean? Look for the trends, but if there's nothing that you can find there, it doesn't really matter as a fan. Um, Next thing we're going to talk about, the NWA announces their brackets for the Crockett Cup. Um, Very interesting to see. So let's look at the first block, shall we? Block A has the Briscoe Brothers. Mark and Jay Briscoe, and they're going to be taking on the Rock and Roll Express, wow. Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson. I still have not seen this video that Casey Briggs told me to check out with uh, Ricky Morton doing a Canadian Destroyer. I don't know if it's true, but he said that that was freaking amazing. <laughs> I need to see that. I have. Have you seen it? I have not. All right. We're going to definitely find that after this podcast. Um, next, we have PCO and Brody King for Villain Enterprises as they are taking on Satoshi Kojima and Yuji Nagata. Blue Justice, baby. Blue Justice. <laughs> um, let's get to Block B. We're going to have Flip Gordon and Bandito versus St- Stuka Jr. Stuka Jr. and Guerrero Maya Jr. All right. Jr. And then we have a new tag team, the War Kings, uh, Crimson, if you remember him from TNA, and Jax Dane. And they are battling a team, whoever wins the wild card battle royal winner. Um, and that battle royal is going to be held before the tournament kicks off with the winners facing the War Kings in the first round. So pray for whoever wins that battle royal. I haven't seen Crimson wrestle in a while. Has he gotten any better? Uh, from what I've seen from highlight packages, I'll say yes. But I haven't seen him in a full-blown match. So I wonder if he's still um, training with uh, Amazing Red. I Shout out to Amazing Red. Amazing Red has actually retired. Shout out to him and House of Glory. Uh, shout out to JD from New York as well. Love the work that you guys are doing. Um, let's talk about some NWA championship matches that we have going on. Willie Mack's going to also be defending the NWA national championship at the show against Boom Boom, Cole Cabana. Love Willie Mack, man. I got him retaining that. Me too. Uh, Jazz versus Sienna. Jazz will be passing the torch. You think so? I think so. I think my girl Jazz might retain. I don't I think don't it's – I don't know. I don't know what Sienna's doing these days, though, either. Last I saw her, she was on that um, May Young Classic. That was the last time I saw her, too, before this. And to me, the main event for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, we have Nick Aldis versus Marty Skrull. Look like how you said that, Marty. <laughs> yes. Um, the villain. I can see Marty winning this, but he won't hold it too long because I just see he go – then again, they do have a working relationship with a well, they might have a working relationship with AEW. Marty Skrull's going to AEW. Period. That that's more certain than who's gonna win this match. Yeah. Um, I don't think it matters either way who wins. I'd like to see Marty win, but if Nick Aldis retains, I'm cool with that too. I don't know who'll be the next person to dethrone him, though. But Nick Aldis is a great NWA champ. I like the prestige he carries with the belt. Yeah. Um let us get into this new Japan show. Rob, I'm gonna let you take this one over. All right, so we got our lineup for the Wrestling Dontaku for New Japan Pro Wrestling. It looks like this event is going to start April 20th, and it goes all the way till May 4th. What up, Rob Van Dam? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you just got me in trouble. Yeah. Kids, don't ask why he said that. So, we've got some interesting matches here. Um, like the April 20th show, we're going to see Juice Robinson versus Bad Luck Fale for the IWGP United States Championship. And Kota Ibushi will defend his IWGP Intercontinental Championship against Zack Sabre Jr. 
Uh, Abushi just won that, so I got him retaining. Juice Robinson might lose that belt. Yo, come on, dude. To bad luck, Fale. What Juice? Had, when was the last time he defended it? That's what I'm saying. He's getting a defense in. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Don't do that to my boy Juice. Man. I love Juice. Let's see here. All right, so we got the Never Open Way Six Man Tag Team Championship. We got Ryusuke Taguchi, Toriyano, Friggin' Yano, <laughs> and Togi uh, Makabe versus Hikuleo, Tangaloa, and Tama Tonga, G-O-D. Um, That's on April 22nd for that show. The 26th we have for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships, we have Sho and Yo of Rapungi 3K versus Shingo. And uh, Bushi. All right, so we get down to the 29th. Key matches. We got the IWGP Tag Team Championship. G.O.D. versus Toriyano and Togi Makabe. <laughs> and Hiroki Goto versus Jay White. Let's go, Goto. <laughs> <laughs> um, May 3rd show, we're going to have for the Never Open Weight Championship, Jeff Cobb versus uh, Taichi. And then for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, Dragon Lee versus Ishimori in their rematch. Now, that match I'm actually looking forward to because I think this is where uh, Hiromu Takahashi makes his return. I like that. I hope he does. Shout out to Daryl, too. Love Daryl. We miss you, (laughs) Daryl. Come out in the neck brace. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then May 4th is the big show. This is the rematch that has me buzzing and I wanted to talk about. I know you're looking forward to this. Okada versus Sonata, dude. I've been telling people for a, quite some time that Sonata is a freaking heavyweight main eventer. And I think this is the match where he finally like wins over everybody. Like the tournament ones, you could always say, oh, it was a tournament match. He had a good match. No, this is where he shows, like, dude, I almost beat Okada. I came with this close. I don't think Okada's losing, but I think he shows that he can beat him. Now, I definitely don't see Okada being a transitional champion, but... This is going to be a great match. This could be a contender for a match of the year. I agree with that. I think Sonata's going to win like the Intercontinental title first or something, in my opinion, too. So you're going with a slow build? Yeah, slow build for Sonata. But I think the days of him and Evil being a tag team are coming to an end. Sorry, Evil. Hey, I still love you, buddy. (laughs) Someone does. So (laughs) I'm just (laughs) sorry. I love Evil, too. I'm just saying. I'm hating. I'm sorry, Evil. Don't hit me with your... uh, the scythe. Yeah, please. <laughs> that broth. <laughs> uh, inside joke, folks. So, rumor has it, WrestleMania 37 may have their home already. Remember, folks, this is a rumor. A rumor. <laughs> so don't take uh, this as gospel. But WrestleMania could be heading out west in 2021. WrestleMania has been known to release these stories. We've heard before that, oh, WrestleMania is going to be in Philadelphia. Wrong. WrestleMania is going to be in Minnesota. Wrong. Now here we are. WrestleMania 37 may be in Los Angeles' new stadium in 2021. Rob, what do you think of this? How do you? I know I'm going to make my way out there if that's the case. That's right. And I think the theme song needs to be California Love. Absolutely. (laughs) They know how to party. Yeah. Knows how to party. R.I.P. Pop. Yeah. Dre, how you doing, man? How you doing? Tupac, that is. <laughs> <laughs> we got this is a wrestling show. <laughs> exactly. Um, Rob, let's talk about a release real quick. That uh oh, Dasha bot? Yeah. She's gone from the company. Yeah. Dasha Fuentes has been released. I don't know if there's anything behind that or if she's one of her release. Um, doesn't she work for ESPN as well? No, it's Charlie Caruso. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Dasha, you're fine as hell. Uh, I'm sorry that you were released. I I thought you could have did better than, but you probably weren't allowed to do better. So what can yeah, I like say? A lot of people are handcuffed in that company, but she'll she'll be fine. Yeah, she'll figure it all out. And uh, if you guys hear me clicking around here, I just want to make sure that I get this next one completely covered and correct. We are going to talk a little bit about this whole Triple H Stephanie. They kind of did some interviews today, and. I don't know. We we could talk about the Fox deal or we could talk about the storyline stuff first. Let's talk about the storyline stuff first, I guess. Um, you sent me an article yesterday about them, WWE being them, pronouns, pal, um, about looking for, what was it, a storyline for... Continuity. Yeah, continuity. 
something we've been begging for. Do you think Vince is really going to let that happen though? Like you're going there to be the sacrificial, the sacrifice, sacrificial, lamb. sacrificial <laughs> whipping. I was gonna say whipping boy. Damn. Like, dude, Vince is going to definitely like tongue lash you. Say, oh, I know what I'm talking about, and then you're just going to get mowed over. So what's the point of you being there? I don't know, man. I think I feel like with this um. Oh, what's it called? The XFL coming up. He might be a little more preoccupied. Maybe that's why Bruce uh, Bruce Pritchard is back. Fans, if you want Vince to be preoccupied, watch the XFL and Please. act like you're interested. Please. <laughs> but with that being said, I just don't think that's a good move. And did you know that Triple H and Stephanie said that storylines are written a year in advance sometimes? I don't believe that. I, I do a little bit. I think that they're not fully lying. I think they have a plan. Do you remember last year? We all knew that Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair was going to be the main event a year before. We knew Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar a year before that. But that's not really writing the story. That's saying what they want. They have to write how they're going to get there. Right, right. I'm and not saying always... that, but it was planned out a little bit. They knew what they wanted for their main event. Here's my issue, though. Things happen. Things change. Now, WWE doesn't always go with the change. And I'm hearing rumors of last-minute changes. Look at Asuka's title change. They had Charlotte Flair defeat Asuka, and I'm pretty sure Asuka didn't know about that until like a couple days before. Probably the day of. Yeah, that's... that's... Hey, can we talk to you for a minute? <laughs> Thanks, pal. <laughs> but they, they had her lose, and Vince makes these changes last minute, so I don't know. I still think they need to do better with storylines as far as they're concerned. And I think Triple H and Stephanie know, like, well, we can't say that. It's corporate stuff. You can't get into it. You can't yeah. make the company look bad. Now, Rob, I'm going to let you get this uh, Triple H article here. Let you do the big time. This is the big article. All right. So, you all know SmackDown's moving to Fox in uh, fall this year. What is it? October 4th, right? They announced October 4th, 2019 is the official fall date. All right. So, it was an interview. I forgot who they did this with. Uh, Sports Business Journal. They were talking about how SmackDown will be reimagined on uh, Fox. And we know we've heard rumors about this is going to be more uh, sports oriented or more, more like a sports show, more sports oriented, basically focusing more on the in-ring product than like storylines, which I, I like that actually. It kind of reminds me of like old school, like NWA type. You could probably do it like New Japan and tell a story in the ring, but True. what do you know? I don't know. I guess we'll see. <laughs> but what did he say? Uh, there's definitely going to be differences. We haven't made any announcements formally, but we are so excited to be partnering with Fox and to be on USA. McMahon continued by bringing up being sandwiched between the NFL with football on Thursday nights while SmackDown on Friday, then college football on Saturdays and Sunday on NFL. Uh, that sounds more like a ratings uh, discussion than anything about like what SmackDown is going to be like. But Triple H chimes in. And he stated that there was going to be a contractual requirement to provide that level of exposure, of exposure for WWE and that Fox has already gone above and beyond that point. As this goes forward, that will just rise that type of activity across the board. Fundamentally, as a company, we constantly reimagine ourselves. So we're deep in the process now of figuring out what the reimagined version of SmackDown will be. And that will... It's confirmed that will debut on Friday, October 4th, 2019. With that being said, I think we're going to see another company possibly debut October 4th, 2019, around that time period. On a Friday? I, I, I'm not saying on a Friday. I think they're going to debut around that time period is what I said. I think um, on a Tuesday. A, would that be October 1st, right? A Tuesday night that's dynamite, we'll say. I mean, it'd be smart. The Elite. <laughs> don't sue us please but yeah um interesting stuff here i think that we're gonna see the first like you know a little like i'm gonna take your people hey wh where's wrestling on tuesdays snatch 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 we got a couple more i don't think that I, I just saw an article and i'm a business nerd so i was looking at business insider and i saw an article for aew up there and i freaked out i'm like i gotta click this because i'm a loser so i'm like mm -hmm. okay click click and they talk about it. And Conrad Thompson, the second best Conrad in podcasting, brings up the idea of WWE is not worried about losing market share. They're more so need to be worried about losing talent to them right now. And there's a lot of unhappy talent. So WWE is going to have to fix that. And I think that's going to be the main story to be told. 
And I guess, Rob, real quick while we're here, Dean Ambrose. I want your thoughts on the Dean Ambrose situation. I did a podcast about it before. Dean Ambrose looks like he's finally gone from WWE. What do you see him doing? Does he take six months off? Is he going to be someone who shows up somewhere else? Now, there was rumors out there that saying he will be back at WWE in like, um, what was that, six months? Something like that. But in the meantime, AEW has put an offer out there for $6 million a year. Supposedly. I don't know about that. That's a lot of money. I don't know what he wants to do, man. It feels like He feels like somebody that probably just wants to hang out at home for a little bit. Kind of like recollect himself. I would kind of like to see him go back to CZW just for a little bit. Maybe maybe like a one-off. Jesus! Just try to find himself, you know? I mean, I, I wouldn't be mad. Maybe he goes in and has one match with somebody or teaches whoever the new young punk kid is a lesson. Because it kind of feels like with his exit that like he was hurt by something that he loved so much. And I don't know. I just feel like he needs to find himself before he makes his next big decision. Yeah, I definitely think there's more to that story. Um, With that being said, though, guys, we're going to take a little break here. And when we come back, we are going to have our top 10 moves for the Superstar Shake-Up. You're not going to want to miss that one. Hey, everyone. Wilford from Wilford Watches Podcast. And you're listening to Everything Pro Wrestling. I to promise to each and every one of you, because it will all begin again. I think need, things need to be shaken up around here. It's time to shake them up. All right, guys, and we're back, and we're here to talk about the superstar shakeup that's going to be happening on Monday and Tuesday for both shows. Um, on Brain Buster Radio, I already have a tremendous episode lined up for you. It'll be kind of a teaser. I have two people who are drafting their own brands. It'll be very interesting to see how they. one side has Raw, one side has SmackDown, um, and I will be looking for feedback on which side does better. And that will release on Saturday on Brain Busta Radio, and that's Brain Busta with an A. All right? But, Rob, let's talk about this uh, superstar shakeup. Number one, are you excited for it? Um, I'm, I wouldn't say excited. I'm looking forward to it. Um. Quote my man Ice Cube, let's shake him up, shake him up, shake him up, shake him. <laughs> Love that song. It was a good day. <laughs> Ooh, uh, All right. So hopefully this is a good day. <laughs> yeah. Superstar shakeup needs to happen. I mean, how damaged is this already, though? Like, all right. In my heart of hearts, you probably saw the video I did a couple years ago with Casey. Dude, I called this. Like, you can't trust or put any faith in a brand split because they don't stick to it. WWE has, like, amnesia with this shit. Like, they just, nope, I forgot. It's like we kept saying, man, what brand split? (laughs) Brand split be damned. (laughs) What brand split is, like, my favorite quote when someone appears on the other show. So if you ever hear me say that, that's what it's for. Although with the shows being further apart starting in October, maybe it might make more sense. (laughs) Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I do. Is it going to be hard for you to watch wrestling on a Friday's? Oh, for me, yeah. I mean, is it because of work schedule or yeah. because – what if you're off, though? Would you watch a wrestling on a Friday, a wrestling show? Or are you busy? <laughs> Usually I'm out doing something, so I don't know. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, I don't well, know. Well, you know they call that slot on TV. They call it the Friday night death slot. Yeah, well, maybe they're trying to test WWE to see what they can do. And yeah. then if they do well, they'll move them. But let's talk about this superstar shakeup, Rob. There's a bunch of guys who need to move. What do you think for call-ups? Are we going to see lots of guys come up? I don't know about lots, but I could definitely see like a, a Pete Dunn type. Um, I don't know if we consider 205 Live the main roster or not, but I can see like a Buddy Murphy getting moved over to like Raw or SmackDown. Um, I could even see a Velveteen Dream pulling a Kevin Owens coming up with his title. Oh, dear God. Don't do that to my <laughs> man Velveteen. I feel like anybody from NXT getting the call up, it's a true like call down. I don't know. I don't want to see it happen. With that being said, Rob, let's talk about what we kind of spoke about before. Our top 10 moves that we feel like need to happen. We kind of just spitballed these off the top of the head. If we miss one, sorry, I didn't mean to. But we kind of threw this together real quick. Uh, Rob, give me your number one. Um, I have uh, Finn Balor moving to SmackDown with the uh, IC title and Samoa Joe moving to Raw with the U.S. title. And I feel like this is more so for Samoa Joe than it is for Finn Balor. Finn Balor does need to change the scenery, but Samoa Joe is probably going to lose that U.S. title to Braun Strowman, unfortunately. So 
I mean, do you think Joe is safe at this point? Or do you think Joe's just going to get fed and then it's like, all right, go somewhere? I feel like he's going to be fed, and I hate that. I don't know if Joe, the bench just doesn't see what everyone else sees in Joe. I think the man's probably number one on the mic right now in the company. I think Joe is an age thing, though, in the injuries. Like, I feel like if Joe would have came five or ten years before, it will be completely different. But where we're at right now, it's kind of like, eh. I, I know that the dude kills it every time he comes comes on though. So I think if you build him as a beast, like that win over Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania, that shit was badass. I'm not gonna lie. Like and apparently that wasn't even due to injury. That was just to it was more more time constraints and just to showcase some old Joe. But but showcase Joe more like that. Have him fight more lower guys and just destroy them. Like is this the best that you've got? And and then Braun Strowman comes out and ruins everything. So you don't think Braun moves? You think it's going to be these I think two? Braun stays on Raw. Okay. You think Vince still likes him? Is he still like a pet project? Well, he's big and sweaty, so yeah. Disturbing, folks. <laughs> I feel like he's just like destroyed every car, any like piece of material he could. I don't care anymore at this point. He destroyed a Camaro to sell a toy and feuded with some SNL stars on the pre-show. And this is a guy that was supposed to was earmarked for a Universal Championship run. I think he still should have got it though at uh, Sweet Saudi Money too. Electric Bungalow. <laughs> Bung- <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Silent Monster for that name. <laughs> I'm over Braun Strowman. Same. Yawn um, Strowman, as I call him now. <laughs> number three, Becky Lynch. We have written down um, champ, champ. Becky two belts. She is someone who I have poised for greater things. Um, I mean, how do you how do you take the belts off of her though? How do we move forward with this? I mean, she's She's got to lose one. Do you think they're just – are they unifying these belts for a reason? No. Here, here's why I say this. Matt Hardy challenged Zack Ryder to a tag team title unification match, winner take all. Is this just for people trying to get noticed, or is this part of the storyline, you think? I don't think they're going to unify any titles. I think if you're going to do a tag division, I think you have one male tag division, one female tag division, and then you put them on the shows. I think you should just have one set of champions for everything, though, and then the champions can go back. I think it's best if the champions go back and forth. Then that shows, okay, you're a draw. I need you to go on this show to pop a rating tonight. And it goes kind of old school with I it. I mean, I would like that, but I don't think that's going to happen. Why not? They, they love their titles, man. That's so dumb. I mean, it's, it's merchandise, too. Yeah. I think they've – I was reading something a couple weeks ago. They sold more championship belts in the last year than they've done over, like, the last five years, something like that. I believe it. I'm looking at two back behind me right now, so <laughs> I, I'm not mad at him. Um, I'll give you number four here. All right, Sasha Banks moves to SmackDown, and I want Sasha Banks as a heel, separated from Bailey, separated from all this whole this tag division thing. Sasha Banks should be a star. <laughs> Sasha Banks should be top three in the women's division, easy. And I don't know what she's done wrong, who she pissed off, but fix it. Yeah, I think Sasha Banks is someone who definitely belongs on that brand. Um, I said this since day one. She seems like the Eddie Guerrero of the women's division. I can't believe that they're not behind her. I don't know what it is or why they dislike her. I can see Sasha being gone, though, very soon from this company. I don't think she cares if she has to go to Ring of Honor or if she has to go somewhere else, even AEW. See, she's someone that just loves to wrestle. Yeah. And that's what I like about her, too. She like she She loves the business for what it is. Yeah, I just fear for her diving and everything else, but she's light enough to where she can take some of those bumps and be all right. <laughs> yeah, but she's got to be careful, though. I don't want to see her get hurt or injure herself long term. Number five, though, you have uh, Ricochet. I think this was the one you suggested. Ricochet yeah. to Monday Night Raw. And uh, you brought up a real good thing about the uh, voiceover work with it. Uh, it's just alliteration, the marketing rights and stuff. You got Ricochet on Raw, uh, Monday Night Ricochet. It's just, I I did this just because I want him separated from Aleister Black. I feel like Aleister Black can be an Undertaker-esque character on SmackDown. This is number six, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> number six, Aleister Black to SmackDown. As long as they don't botch his entrance again. Where, where do you see these guys winding up, though? Are they, like, mid-card, do you think? Like, they're, like, A, you're going to be intercontinental. I think uh, Aleister Black could be on, like, a CM Punk-type level. Like, upper? Yeah. Okay. I can I can see him becoming WWE champion or Universal champion one day. Okay. I can even see Ricochet doing that because I think you market video games around Ricochet. 
I like it. I think Ricochet is the perfect type of video game player that people want to see. Alistair Black does have that dark-esque kind of personality that he should be a loner. He should kind of be by himself. He's the dude that I want to see in the boiler room walking around in the dark before his match or something. Like, he doesn't talk to anybody. Nobody gets him. They're like, what's the deal with that dude? And it's just like, you don't need to know anything. I don't want them to go the Raven route with him, where he's kind of like this moody little brat in WCW, but... (laughs) Yeah, and then we find out he's a rich kid. (laughs) (laughs) I love Raven, by the way. Quote to Raven, nevermore. Uh, Number seven, we got... Buddy Murphy going to Monday Night Raw. I think Buddy Murphy, it's time for him to come up, dude. He's too good. And like I said before, do we consider 205 Live the main roster or not? Because Maria Canellas will have to tell you otherwise. Hell no, that ain't that. <laughs> yeah. No. Do you get to be on the main event shows, on the uh, pay-per-views on the network? No. So then that's the end of that. Sorry, bro. You, they, they've been on one show, the Cruiserweights. Yeah. I ain't trying to hear it. Yeah, Buddy Murphy, it's about time. He's done all he could do with that brand, and it's time for him to showcase it to a bigger audience. I think Cedric's ready, too. He's not number eight for the record, but I think Cedric Alexander's ready, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, number eight, eight, though, Pete Dunn. Pete freaking Dunn, the bruiser weight. I got him going to SmackDown. Only re- I picked him for SmackDown because – with the rumors of the October 4th move, it's going to be more uh, in-ring oriented. You, you need somebody that can just go. Pete Dunn's your guy. Let me ask you this. Is Pete Dunn going to struggle, though, because of time constraints? Pete Dunn, we know, has had long matches with uh, the Kofi brothers. He's had long matches with Walter. Um, I know that has been like kind of a complaint of people. Do you think this is going to enhance him? Like, listen, you got 12 minutes, bro. You're not getting 36 minutes every match like um, you have been. You just got to go in and get your shit in. All right. I mean, um, this can be it, it'll be it'll be good for him. I I would like to see Pete Dunn on that brand um feuding with some people. I think he's another one who could be like a great US Intercontinental champ to start off with and uh feud in that range. Number 9, we've got Daniel Bryan, the new Daniel Bryan if I hear that one more time. It's Captain Planet Daniel Bryan, damn it. <laughs> Um, I think that he should go to Monday Night Raw as well. If you want to get him away from that WWE title picture, I think Brian loves being on SmackDown, though, personally. Yeah. Well, you remember a couple years ago he said he wanted to be Mr. SmackDown, yeah. the face of the company or face of that brand with the world heavyweight title? He said, give me the Intercontinental oh, title on SmackDown and something. leave me alone. <laughs> I mean, the man was trying everything just to stay on that brand. He was like, yeah, no, just leave me with the Intercontinental title. I'll defend it over here all the time. Just leave me over here. Yeah, it's, it, it's been a while. I picked him just to go to Raw just because it's been so long since he's been on Raw. Yeah, it'd be a nice change of pace. And I think his heel heat uh, would do some wonders for Monday Night Raw because that crowd is dead. <laughs> there is no heat on that show. Um, And last but not least, I'll give you this last move. We got Drew McIntyre going to SmackDown. And if they do make this move, he better be the number one top heel on the brand. <laughs> I think Drew's going to be the champ real soon. I, I th- hope so. I-, I fear that he may be the man to beat Kofi if he's not hurt. I don't hope for that, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I think he may. I If they give it to somebody, it's going to be this guy. I can see it, though. And he, he he's worked hard enough to where he it, it'll be justified. I got to ask you, Rob, is Drew McIntyre money in the bank, though? I don't think he needs the briefcase. Who who do you, Who can you see winning it then at this point? Um, are we splitting up by brands or just go ahead? Throw maybe out four th- for four from Raw, four for SmackDown. How about you just give me a name for the guys and a name for the women? So okay. you can say yes. So since Baron Corbin was unsuccessful last year in cashing in his Money in the Bank briefcase, I feel like this winner has to win. Um, if it's not Drew McIntyre, I can see like an Aleister Black or an Andrade winning. I can see one of those guys too. Um, Andrade was one of my favorites to win. Uh, also, I think I can see Andrade going to Raw, too, by the way. That was one of the names oh, I was Oh, we can throw of. a couple of different ones out there, too, if you want. Like, real quick, I can see Andrade going to Raw. I can see Roman going to – Roman staying on Raw. Oh, okay. I think Roman stays on Raw. Seth Rollins goes to SmackDown. Kofi and the New Day go to Raw. I got to stop saying Kofi and the New Day because they're going to get ideas to break them up. <laughs> yeah. We don't want that. Um, yeah, I see. I can see those happening. So you think they switch all the belts, basically. Opposite shows, except for the tag belts, I assume, because they're fruit of the fruit roll up yeah. colored. <laughs> Whatever. Well, there's rumors that there's supposed to be new tag titles being commissioned. So, yeah, if Dash Wilder and uh, my boy Scott Dawson aren't getting it. I don't give a damn. Oh. AEW, AEW. <laughs> so, 
we got a lot of interesting things happen with that. What about the women's money in the bank? Did you have a prediction for that? For the women's, I, um, I got my winner in my head already. Who I think is winning? I have from what we what we've been given lately. I can see it's a Mandy. I was gonna say either Mandy Rose or Sonya Deville. I think Mandy Rose wins it. And let me just go on the record. I don't know if you guys remember a couple years ago. I was the biggest Sonya Deville hater. She's changed my mind. I'm a fan. I'm a supporter. Yeah, I really do see. Um, I really see Mandy Rose winning it. I see like a Rhodes Scholars kind of feud coming from this. Or I'm sorry, is it Team Rhodes Scholars? Because we didn't know they were a team. Okay, so who is the uh, <laughs> who? What the hell is his name? Damian Sandow. Sandow. Who's the Sandow of the group? Mandy Rose. She's gonna win the briefcase, but she's gonna definitely clobber uh, her girl to get it. I think. I think she's gonna push. Sonya Deville off after they like said they would work together or whatever, and she sees her friend right there about to get it, and then maybe she does something, you know, grabs a chair, hits her in the leg. She'll do something that's like, come on, do you do that to your friend? That makes well, me sad. Every person for themselves. <laughs> that makes me sad, but I, I could see them breaking them up. But then we're losing a lot of tag teams for this women's division, right? But then again, oh, that's one other one we need to talk about. On SmackDown, Paige says she has a surprise tag team to bring up to face uh, the Iconics. Um, I can see the uh, the Sky Pirates coming up from NXT. I can see this being really bad, too, though, and it's Tamina and Nia Jax. And they just needed some guidance. Oh, yeah, Nia saying. Jax and Paige are really close, too. That would be Total sick. Divas, yeah. Good God. I, I don't want that to happen, but it could. I'm definitely down for uh, Sky Pirates and... Um, <laughs> What if it was like Rhea Ripley and uh, the Gonzalez chick? Raina Gonzalez? Yes, Raina Gonzalez. Um, anytime I see Rhea Ripley on my TV, I'm happy. So, I think Rhea Ripley's ready, too. I don't think she really needs to stay in NXT UK. Just saying. Just throwing it out there. But that's all I got, Rob. You got anything else you want to talk about on this show? Uh, nah, I think we covered all we can. You damn right. And this... The hangover is still real, folks, from uh, <laughs> WrestleMania. So give me a little bit of time to get back on my feet with all of this. But if you guys haven't, check out all the links in the description below. I got my Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, whatever else I have out there, Facebook stuff. Check it out. Like, subscribe. Do whatever you can to support the brand. And definitely make sure you get yourself some merch. And shout out to Rob for creating all those designs. Rob has really been helping me out this week. So I got to show you some love, brother. So you know, slap know. it up. <laughs> So anytime, my brother, other than that, there's only one way to leave this show. And it's with a famous promo from Mr. McMahon in 2004. Because by God, it's time to give you what you want. It's time. It's time for a new Raw. It's time for a new SmackDown. By God, it's time for a new WWE. I thank you very much. Thank you, fuck you, bye.